Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome to the channel. For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Joey. I run the Crossworld TCG YouTube channel here, which has primarily been a Dragon Ball Super card game channel. And for those of my Dragon Ball fans out there, you guys know I've been on a little bit of a break. Part of that was because of vacation. Part of that was because I'm moving for a new job soon and just need time to get settled in but also to be quite honest i've been making dragon ball super card game videos for five years straight so i needed a little bit of a break and i'm kind of easing out of that break in today's video but today is obviously not a dragon ball super card game video as you guys can see from the title fantasy flight games was gracious enough to give me some reveals for the starter decks for the star wars unlimited card game so huge huge thank you to those guys for just giving me this opportunity to share new cards with you all. Now, just a little bit about myself and why you should watch this channel for Star Wars limited content. Uh, just my accolades for Dragon Ball Super. I've topped at least 80% of events that I've been to for the Dragon Ball Super card game. Most events I go to, I do end up topping. I consider myself a successful competitive player. Regional win, multiple top four finishes in that game. So I know my stuff when it comes to card games. And what really matters for me in card games are one ip it's why i love dragon ball so much and why i'm so eager to get into star wars but also it's gameplay if i don't like the way a game plays i generally just can't dedicate time to playing it or covering it that's why i wasn't really able to do one piece or digimon i just didn't really fall in love with those games but i gotta say after playing star wars unlimited at gen con uh, it was the first time i got to play the game obviously and before that i had done the video going over the rule book they released but I really, really liked the game. There are, of course, similarities to Dragon Ball that I really, really enjoyed personally, but also some of those key differences that made it feel a little bit unique for me, like one thing being the space and ground battles. I find those to be really, really cool, and I'm just a big fan of the Star Wars IP in general. Maybe you can tell by my baseball jersey here. But yeah, today we're going to go over the reveals that Fantasy Flight Games was gracious enough to give me. Once again, huge thank you to those guys. And for those of you guys that have been around the channel for a long time, just be a little bit patient with me. I am still going to consider myself in a break of sorts. I might slowly start releasing videos here and there for both Dragon Ball and Star Wars. So again, just a little bit of patience, please. But also, this video is going to feature a new production style that I've been working on while on break. So you guys know that I have been, you know, kind of actively working on the channel. So I hope you guys like it. If you guys have any ideas or thoughts or comments, please do drop them down below. Let me know what you think about this new production quality. Just trying to do what I can to slightly improve the, uh, the quality of the videos. So let me know what you think. And with that being said, we'll get into the reveals. Thanks, guys. So the first new card we're going to go over today comes from the Vigilance aspect. Now, if you guys don't really know what aspects are, they're more or less the colors of the game. So Vigilance is definitely shorthanded by the color blue. You can totally just get away with calling it that, but I'm going to do my best to memorize all the different aspects of the game, as I encourage you guys to do as well, just to make it easier to play the game. So this is the Vigilance color, and what Vigilance is all about is really defense. So for example, there's the Chewbacca walking carpet leader, which I think is just an absolutely hilarious name and reference. So Chewbacca on his flip side is a Sentinel, which means units in this arena, meaning the ground arena, cannot attack your non-Sentinel units or your base. And then the uh, beginning side of Chewbacca can grant your other units Sentinel as well on play. So you can see the very defensive nature of Sentinel in general and the start of what's going on with Vigilance. And then for another example, we have the 2-1-B Surgical Droid. So this is a one cost, one attack power, three HP. And on attack, you may heal to damage from another unit. There's also a keyword called Restore that you'll see on certain cards, a lot of them happening to be in Vigilance, where when they attack, you're able to restore that much HP from your base. So a lot of healing going on in this color. And we have Distant Patroller as our next example, which is also somewhat similar to the Luke Leader from the starter deck. So this card says, when defeated, you may give a shield token to another Vigilance unit. Luke lets you give shields to units as you play them. So you can see the very defensive nature of Vigilance here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the card we are revealing today. So that card is Resilient, which is just a perfect name for a card in the Vigilance aspect. It's a one cost upgrade. So upgrades are very much like equips, like you know me and my personal experience, equip spells from Yu-Gi-Oh. They're very, very similar to that. I believe there's also something called artifacts and magic these might resemble. So what this does it has no effect text and it's just a plus zero attack, plus three HP. Now that might seem a little bit bland and a little bit weak, but honestly, 
that plus three HP can be really strong, especially on Sentinel units. So you pair that with Chewbacca leader. Now you're looking at a 12 HP leader. That is going to be really hard for your opponent to actually remove from the board. And if you've played a little bit of Star Wars, keeping your leader around once you flip them with the epic action is a really important thing to manage throughout the game. And with uh, Chewbacca having that much of an HP stat, that's going to be a really, really hard uh, number for your opponent to overcome via attack. So Resilience, very cool card coming out in the beginning of Star Wars Unlimited. Now, the next card we're going to be looking at is from the Command aspect. Command, also shorthanded by green. I feel like Command has quite a bit going on. It seems like it might have a little bit of everything in terms of, like, aggression, defense, all those kinds of things. But one thing I really have noticed about Command, it has a lot of search power. So, one example of that being Prepare for Takeoff. This is a two-cost event card. Search top eight cards of your deck for up to two vehicle units, reveal them, and then draw them. So that's a literal plus one in card advantage, which in card games, if you don't know, is really, really good. And as another example, we have Grand Moff Tarkin. So this is a four drop. He has two attack power and three HP. When played, search top five cards of your deck for up to two Imperial cards, reveal them, and draw them. So again, a plus one, insanely, insanely good card, a card that was also revealed somewhat recently. And the card we're going to reveal today in the command aspect is Recruit. So this is an event card. So it's a one-time usage. It's a one cost. And what it allows you to do is search the top five cards of your deck for a unit, reveal it, and draw it. Now, if you guys are new to card games, this is an insanely a powerful effect. Search top five and add any unit you want. That is so good. It is only searching the top five. Of course, the card has to be balanced in different ways, but being able to take any unit you want is a really great form of skill expression and just a really powerful effect overall. Now, one really cool thing I wanna point out about this card and just a mechanic of the game in general is that no matter what aspects you choose to play between your leader and your base, you can play cards outside of your three aspects. So let's say you're playing a Vigilance, Heroism, Cunning deck. You can still play this Recruit card. It's just going to cost you two more resources. So if you wanted to cast this thing for three and be able to search any unit in your deck off the top five, you could do that. I'm not saying you should go ahead and do that in every single deck that's not playing Command, but it is a really cool option, and I really appreciate that as a card game player and someone who really enjoys deck building. You have that option there if you think it can actually benefit your deck. I think that's really, really cool. Now, the next card and the final card we're going to be revealing today is also in the command tree, and that is Admiral Piet, Captain of the Executor. We have a two-drop ground unit, which means he's playable early on in the game, technically even turn one, but you probably don't want to play him exactly on turn one. We'll talk about why in just a little bit. He is a unique card, meaning you can only have one copy of him on the field, and we can tell that by the little diamond next to his name. That's what that means. He's a command and a villainy card. He is a 1 attack power, 4 HP, and now for his effect, each friendly non-leader unit that costs 6 or more gains Ambush. And what the Ambush keyword does is, after you play that unit, it may ready and attack an enemy unit. So there is Summoning Sickness in this game. Ambush is a way for you to circumvent that, but it attacks into other units. It doesn't go just for free damage at the base, which again, I think is a really cool balancing thing they've done with this game. Now, let's talk about cards that specifically work with Admiral Pia that I think are kind of cool. So, if you look at some examples, the first one we have is Gladiator Star Destroyer. A 6-drop, command, villainy, unit, a space unit though. It's a 5-6, Imperial Vehicle, Capital Ship. When played, give a unit Sentinel for this phase. So, we talked about Sentinel already and how it protects your base and your other units. And this is kind of a cool combo because... What you want is your Admiral Piet to survive as long as possible so that every high cost unit you play gains ambush. So with this combo, you can give some other high cost unit Sentinel and that'll protect your Admiral Piet from being attacked. So it'll stick around longer and give more of your cards ambush. That's a really cool combo there. Another card you can pair with Admiral Piet is ATST, a six drop ground unit in the villainy aspect. It's a 6-7 Imperial Vehicle Walker, and it simply has Overwhelm. When attacking an enemy unit, deal excess damage to the opponent's base. And giving this thing Ambush, specifically attacking into units, 
is so powerful because you can just trample over small ground units or even attack into big units and if you deal excess damage they're taking that damage to their base and you're doing that the exact turn you play atst as long as you have admiral pia in play and that's kind of what i was talking about earlier where you may not want to play admiral pia you actually probably don't want to play admiral piet super early in the game even though you technically could because you want to combo it with these high cost cards and the longer you have admiral piet out there without sentinels on board the longer it's going to be susceptible to being attacked being removed from the board and you don't want that so the nice thing about command is it also has ramp built in in the form of cards like super laser technician and resupply where you can generate a lot of resources uh, more quickly than your opponent and then you can even theoretically play Admiral Piet and Gladiator Star Destroyer or ATST in the same turn. That would be pretty ideal, but of course, not every game is going to go that way. So you just want to be very strategic about when you actually play your Admiral Piet to the board so you can combo it with these high cost cards. So that's going to do it for the reveals today, guys. I think with that, everything in the starter decks is now officially revealed. So uh, once again, I'm super honored. Thank you so much to Fantasy Flight Games for allowing me to reveal these cards to you guys. And with that, I hope you guys have a great time testing starter deck format and whatever we have of set one so far. I've been having a blast playing Luke versus Vader, uh, Chewbacca versus Boba Fett, all those cool games so far I've been really enjoying. What do you guys think about these cards? Overall, I think they're really, really good. And of course, it's early on in the game's lifespan, so the cards are more simplistic. Expect cards to get more complicated as the lifespan of the game goes on. That's generally just how it works for card games. If you look at like Yu-Gi-Oh! Set 1 to Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, or any card game for that matter, it just happens to go that way. So I'm pretty excited to go along for the ride and see where Star Wars Unlimited takes us. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the cards. And if you guys want to support me, there are tons of ways to do so down in the description. Very simple and free way for you is if you want to buy any cards on TCG Player, use my link in the description. It really does help me out, guys. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.